um, let's see here. All right, there we go, Paul. I follow directions eventually. Thank you, sir. Hello, Martin. And Martin's Hello. disembodied head. Fire up the screen share. How's that looking? That looks good. All right. Well, <laughs> note to self, try not to follow Brian Timoney <laughs> and his amazing presentations. But actually, that was a, uh, <clears throat> that was a good segue because Brian was doing a pretty deep dive into SQL there, and I'm going to be doing an even deeper dive into what's underneath the SQL. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Greetings from sunny Victoria, BC on the West Coast. Um, I am Martin Davis. I work for Crunchy Data um, with Paul on JTS, GIOS, and PostGIS. Um, I'm a spatial algorithms guy mostly, so I spend lots of time coding up spatial algorithms and then trying to get them out into PostGIS for your viewing and usage pleasure. And today I'm gonna to be talking about some new and improved um, algorithms that are showing up in PostGIS 3.3, as long as you have GIOS 3.11 installed. Um, those are concave hulls, polygon hulls, and polygon triangulation. And I'm also gonna talk about some potential future functionality to do with polygonal coverage functions. Um, so let's dive into the stuff that you can actually get your hands on. First thing is hulls. What are hulls? Well, everyone's familiar with the idea of a convex hull. That's been in post just forever. And convex hulls are polygons that completely enclose all the points of geometries. And they're pretty useful. People like to use them for sort of uh, providing a simple area covering all of their geometry. Um, but they're a pretty crude approximation. Um, if you have a, a non- <laughs> a non-convex geometry, you can easily end up with a whole bunch of empty space that you don't necessarily want. So they, there's a better way to do things, and that is to use a thing called a concave hull. Now, this is, this is a function that's been in post just for a while, but in 3.3, along with GIOS 3.1.1, uh, it got an improvement. The functionality moved into GIOS, and um, got a little more improved. It solved some of the some problems that were in the original code. Um, so a concave hull wraps uh, a set of points, um, but it produces a concave polygon. And there's lots of possible concave polygons that can enclose sets of points. So the how, how convex it is or how concave it is is controlled by a parameter that you give to the function. And this is a number from one to zero and it's essentially the percentage of convexity that you, or concavity that you want in the output data. And as you can see, when you, as you decrease that parameter, you get more and more concave things down to the point where you always get a single connected polygon. So it'll never disconnect the, uh, the set of points that you pass to it. Um, how it works is it actually computes a Delaunay triangulation of the points, and then it sorts the triangles by their longest edge length, and then it starts to throw out triangles starting with the longest edge triangle. And the, uh, the convexity number parameter uh, controls how many of those triangles are discarded. Um, to be really technical, it's actually the uh, fraction, if you, if you take the ratio of the longest edge length to the shortest edge length, then that number is actually the fraction of those edges that are kept. So you can also um, allow your concave files to contain holes by adding another parameter and setting it to true. Um, and you can see how you, it'll, can, it'll produce multiple holes if there's gaps in the data. 
um, when you go all the way down to zero, zero convexity, then you actually lose all your holes because they all turn into gaps and in polygon. So that's great for points. Um, and most concave hull algorithms do only work on points, but that doesn't work too well for polygons. So we have on the left, we have the state of Louisiana. Uh, we're taking the concave hull, the boundary, and we got a really bad concave hull because there's some big uh, gaps along the boundary with no points. Um, you can see that in a little more detail with the, uh, with the right-hand geometry where a set of multi-polygons um, with fairly sparse points uh, produce a pretty unusable concave hull. So uh, in 3.3, um, we added the ability to produce concave hulls of polygons. And these concave hulls will respect the polygon boundaries. Um, and so they do a much better job of forming hulls around sets of polygons. So the way this works is um, we actually triangulate the space around the polygons. And then just like before, sort the triangles in order to their, ed their longest edge length and then start discarding triangles. So another new function that's being introduced is another kind of hull, um, which we're calling a polygon hull. And this is um, a way of simplifying polygon hulls um, in the same way that you might use Douglas Poiker simplifier, but it produces a simplified outline which can either completely contain or be contained by the polygon. Um, it preserves all the holes and it preserves multi-polygons. Um, and it's, there's a, again, like concave hulls, there's a, there's a series of hulls that you can create and the concavity of the hull is controlled this time by a parameter called the vertex fraction. So you can specify the number of vertices that you want to keep um, in your outer hull or your inner hull. So for an outer polygon hull, um, this shows uh, how you, the, the outer hull approximates the polygon while fully containing that, the input polygon, um, and it produces um, quite a bit simpler polygon with not too much change in area. So this could be used for simplifying very dense polygons for spatial querying. Um, you can produce a pretty good representation of a polygon and you can be certain that when you're using the hull for spatial querying that uh, you will always contain all the features that you want to query. Oh, let's go back, oh, hold on. We're, uh, here's an example of inner polygon hulls. Um, this is a polygon that's completely contained within the input polygon, but has a much simpler structure. So the difference between the polygon hull and concave hull is that the outer hull uh, preserves all, um, it, it works on multi-polygons and it preserves all the multi-polygons. So whereas with a concave hull, if you pass it a multi-polygon, such as Newfoundland here with a lot of islands around it, uh, you get a single polygon containing the input, whereas with the outer hull, you every individual input polygon it maintains its um, it is kept as a, as a discrete polygon. So it prevents the outer hull from becoming so simplified that it absorbs the uh, the the polygons. So another new function is uh, involves triangulations. Uh, for a long time, PostGIS has had the ability to compute Delaunay triangulations of points. Um, this is Delaunay triangulations are a um, sort of, in some sense, the the simplest triangulation that um, touches all the points in the input set. Um, 
like the convex hull, though, delamate triangulations don't, um, they, they work on points only. They don't, if you pass on a polygon, it won't respect the edges of that polygon. So you can see here on the left that the delamate triangulation contains triangles which actually cross the edges of the polygon. Um, it also doesn't handle the concavities of a polygon, say Florida, so it produces, always produces a convex set of triangles. So we've added a function called uh, triangulate polygon, which actually um, can properly triangulate input polygons. Um, so it produces the, the best possible triangulation constrained by the edges of the polygons that are provided to it. Now this can be useful for uh, subdividing polygons, um, can probably be useful for certain kinds of spatial analysis, and eventually it might be useful for producing the uh, skeleton, polygon skeletons that were talked about in an earlier talk. So that again is new in post 3.3 and requires GEOS 3.11. So now we're going to come to um, functionality, which is not yet in PostGIS, but uh, is present in JTS and GEOS, and so just has to be exposed in PostGIS. And this is to do with uh, the concept of polygonal coverages. So polygonal coverages are a pretty common spatial model uh, for things like cadastral parcels, political jurisdictions, land use, etc. They are sometimes represented as a topological model using, say, post-just topology. Um, but there's actually another potential op option for representing and processing polygonal coverages. And that's something that uh, I'm going to call a simple polygonal coverage. And all it is is a set of polygons in a table. Um, but uh, those polygons need to be non-overlapping so that they form a correct coverage. Um, so this, this has a lot of advantages. Uh, it's simple, uh, it can be faster to work with. Uh, it matches existing data sets. A lot of people already have data sets that are actually coverages. Um, and it's a good fit for the relational model. But to work with polygonal coverages, uh, we need more supporting functions, and those are what we're looking into developing. So the first thing that we need to be able to do is check whether we actually have a valid polygonal, polygonal coverage for a set of rows. This is obviously desirable for accurate modeling, um, but it's also necessary to have correct operation of the coverage functions that we're developing. So a set of polygons is a valid coverage if the polygons themselves are valid, the polygons are non-overlapping, so they don't cross over one another, and if adjacent polygons are edge-matched. So if polygons touch along an edge, then they have the exact same set of vertices. So what we want is to be able to validate a set of polygons to determine if they form a valid coverage. And what we can actually do is, uh, what we'd like to be able to do is find out if, if they're not valid, is find out where they're invalid. So it'd be nice to have a function where you can run it over a set of polygons and you get back locations of where those polygons are invalid. And locations can be provided as line strings would represent the lines which cause the invalidity between the different polygons. And so for each polygon in the coverage, if they're invalid, we want to be able to report what are the edges of the polygon that cause the invalidity. And this will allow uh, people to use QGIS or um, some other tool to go in and manually fix those issues. Um, it also allows you to visualize how many issues there might be in a data set. So the, a, a nifty way to build this is to build it as a window function. So window functions allow you to process a set of rows 
and return a result for each row. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to be able to um, process an entire table or a subset of a table of polygons and determine if that forms a correct coverage. And for each polygon that's invalid, we want to return the line work that causes the invalidity. So we're proposing a function called SD coverage validate, which is a window function. It'll return either uh, linear geometry for invalid edges, or it'll return null if a polygon is actually valid within that coverage. So by using a window function, you can easily include it in queries and um, along, and you can also include easily include attributes from the original polygons. So unlike a lot of current functions where you might have to collect all the geometry into a single geometry and then process that, this allows you to easily keep uh, the attributes of each input row. Um, it also allows you to easily work with subsets of your data. And um, you can then use all the power of SQL to do things like filter out only invalid polygons, et cetera. So once we have a uh, valid coverage, um, there's several operations that people want to, often want to be able to do with coverages. Uh, probably the simplest one is create, compute unions of the coverage or of subsets of the coverage. So the union will be an aggregate function um, that uh, takes a set of input polygons and computes a, a single output result. Um, it can take advantage of the fact that we're dealing with the polygonal coverage to be much, much faster than using the current ST union. Um, it can be up to 100 times faster to, uh, to union polygons where there's, they have valid coverage geometry or valid coverage topology. Another thing that people like to do with uh, polygonal coverage is, is simplify them. Um, just like uh, PostGIS already has some simplification functions, but they only work on individual polygons. So they uh, produce the problem that has been it's regularly talked about, which is that if you simplify adjacent polygons, they're, they're not necessarily adjacent once in the simplified result. They can cross over one another, or you can have gaps in your, uh, in your coverage. So we need to produce a uh, function that will work over the entire coverage and simplify the boundaries of the polygons, but ensure that there's no gaps between the polygons. So this, again, will be implemented as a window function, SD coverage simplify. Uh, it will, you can apply it to um, a, an entire table or a subset of a table. Um, provided as a simple with a simplification tolerance and uh, quickly get simplified versions of your coverage. So the example there is uh, taking a data set of the US uh, with 11,000 points and simplify it down to about 800 points um, with very little loss in, in, um, in quality, at least at this scale. So another interesting option is to do simplification only of the inner boundaries of a coverage. Um, this, lets, this preserves the full uh, precision of the outer boundaries of the, the set of polygons that provided to it. So this could be useful if you want to simplify just a particular area of a coverage, but ensure that um, that area still matches the surrounding polygons that haven't been simplified. So again, this will be a window function. It'll work in just the same way as the previous one, but it will only simplify the inner boundaries of the polygons. And there's um, a lot of other potential polygonal coverage functions that we might develop, um, such as finding gaps in coverages, cleaning, a set of data so it will form a valid polygonal coverage, uh, reducing the precision of polygonal coverages, and potentially coverage overlay as well. So that's the end of my talk. Are there any questions? 
Well, we have one question from David Bittner. Uh, does SD coverage validate and deal with slivers where there's a gap along a section of shared boundary? Um, the, the, way, the, the version that I presented doesn't. Um, there is another option or another extension where you can provide a sliver tolerance or a, or a distance tolerance and it will find boundary slivers. So qualified yes to that question. <laughs> Known issue. Um, any other?